Hi everyone! Welcome back to the Leon Burger Diaries. So I'm here with Remus, he's on his couch, and uh, I thought I would do a little bit um, of hopefully a helpful video for those of you who are just getting, either preparing to get your first uh, puppy or you're getting another puppy, or I mean a lot of this also works for if you're just if you're getting an adult dog. But I'm gonna put a prep, like a little disclaimer on here. No, I'm not prepping to get another puppy right this second. This is just a video I thought would be useful because I kind of would have liked it when I was getting ready for Remus. And this is specifically for um, more giant dogs. Uh, a lot of this is probably gonna be a lot less relevant for someone getting something small. But I mean, you can use this information for any puppy. Uh, we're gonna try to break it down. I don't have every single item in front of me, but I will tell you what they are. This is like the essentials. Um, some of it's stuff you might not have thought of. Some of it's stuff you might think is less important, but this is like the bare bones, what I consider super important for prepping for a small pupper. Where do you think you're going? So the first thing that you need to consider before buying anything or buy, doing any prep is where you plan on getting your puppy. This is super important because whether you want to get one from a responsible ethical breeder or from some type of rescue, you need to figure out where. There are going to be different rescues, different breeders that go with your lifestyle. Uh, if you're going with a purebred puppy, make sure that you consider what, your, what kind of lifestyle you have. And if you're going for a dog that you don't know the genetic background of, it's even more important that you consider your lifestyle. Not every type of breed fits every lifestyle. So you need to make sure that you make that you get the right dog for the lifestyle you have, rather than trying to make your dog fit your lifestyle. So that's super important. Once you figure out where you're getting your puppy, um, really, you're just going at this. That's the end of a Himalayan cheese, by the way. Um, once you figure out where you want to get them, that's when the real research and prepping begins. The first thing I would recommend would be a book about puppies. I, the internet's great, but the internet's full, you know, opinions are like butts and everybody has one. Um, but books generally have to go through some kind of critical, you know, critical analysis before they get published. And not every book is right, and I don't think everybody needs to read a book cover to cover. However, this book right here, The Puppy Bible, I really liked it because I didn't really read, I didn't read the whole thing. However, I loved what they, they had a week by week um, developmental breakdown, which I loved because it's, it gives you ideas of what to expect from certain ages. And puppies, I mean, giant breeds mature a little slower. So for me, it was like, okay, don't expect all of these exact things to happen. But that was, that to me, that's one of the first things I purchased. The next thing you want to figure out is where you're going to get your food. What kind of food are you going to feed kibble raw? Um, honestly, in 2018, it's so easy to source a good raw, a good and affordable raw source that I highly recommend raw, but that's just me. Um, figure out where you want to get your food, figure out prices, how much it's going to cost. Um, following up with that is what kinds of treats. Uh, I really like for chewing once they're a little older. The Himalayan uh, cheeses are great. They take Remus a really long time. He's not a huge chewer though, like I've said in other videos. Um, something that works universally for pretty much everybody are Benny's Bullies. It's liver, so it's, it's a good, reliable type of treat. Um, they go pretty nuts over it. When you're doing like the critical training, like um, potty training and whatnot though, you're probably going to need to use things like meat or like cheese, something that's like really incentivizes them. But for regular, like regular treats, that that's something I recommend a lot. Something else you're going to need, um, probably, again, this, I'm speaking from as a giant dog owner, um, but we went through three collars. So this is his one that he's wearing currently. Collar is important. I like I like a natural um, leather one with a buckle or with a like a tech like a belt loop type deal because with how strong he is belt like the clips can make me a little nervous he's never broken one but that's just me being a paranoid pet mom um, you also need to get tags now the ones where you get engraved from the pet store they're easier to get and they're usually cheaper however they wear 
um, Remus's war first ones wore down to almost being like Ill, like illegible within the first like eight months. Um, so what we went with these ones by Low Key Canada. So we have a fun one right here. Are they gonna focus? So one says his name, and then on the back it says "Call my parents." This one says, "I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good," and then on the back it says "Mischief managed because his name is Remus from Harry Potter." Um, I recommend her so much. She has two tag sizes. These are the big ones. Um, also different finishes. We got the like the brassy copper ones. Um, her work is really fast. Their work is it's local. So if you're Canadian, you're sporting local. Um, shipping's really cheap. It ships in an envelope, which is awesome. Uh, I can't recommend them enough. I, w I wanted to recommend them in products that I really loved the last video, and it, but they were stayed on his neck, so I just totally forgot. Um, but yeah, so I, I'd recommend investing in good tags. I recommend them a lot. I'll link them down below. I think they're fantastic. My dog has now given up on life. The next thing you want to make sure you get is a good leash. Um, again, there's nothing wrong with leashes at the pet store. We used one for over a year with Remus, um, but I've been forever converted by these guys. This is these are by Highland Hound. Um, again, another local company. This one needs to, needs to be washed. Can you tell? But they wash really well. Um, they're so strong, but so soft. And having a big dog that knows how to pull that makes a huge difference. I raved about her a ton last video so I don't want to embarrass her and keep going but I can't say enough uh, if you're Canadian and you're in the Ontario and if, and if you're in the GTA she is coming to the Canadian Pet Expo Easter weekend and she is doing a, a thing where you can bypass shipping and do a custom order and pick up your order at the expo which is that's what we did with this guy phenomenal choice you can also get the matching BFF bracelets which I have for for this one um, I'll be doing an order for that uh, it's a great way to, like I said, save on shipping and meet the creator, which is, I think, I think that's awesome. The next thing that I didn't know I needed, um, this is, the, this is something that I highly recommend. These are the Julius K9 harnesses or a harness. I like ones that don't go through their legs for big, do for bigger dogs. Cause you know, joint development's really important, but I mentioned that this guy in a previous video about favorites, harnesses can just make uh, leash training a little easier, less pulling, which is great. And with that, something like this, I think is really important for t like training, uh, with, for walks, especially when you got a big pupper, this is a traffic lead. So it's just, it's like a 15 inch long leash that you can keep right at your side. That way you're not constantly looping things around your arms. And I just, I really like them for training and also for keeping Remus close to me. It really helps. Next thing you need to have are bowls. Now, there's the constant debate about elevated bowls, non-elevated bowls. You have to basically do your own research and um, on that. Avoid plastic bowls. That's where my recommendation is. I like using like the crock pot style food dishes and then the copper, um, the copper bowls for water because they get a lot less grimy. They're huge. You can get those. I think it's the CU, like the copper, the element for copper bowl as is where I get mine. Now the next thing is you're gonna want chews of different kinds. Um, I'm not a fan of antlers. They make me a little nervous. I know a lot of people really like them so I'm not gonna say that they're bad. It's just that for me I've, I've seen them splinter and it makes me nervous but uh, bully sticks are wonderful. The uh, Whimsies, depending on your dog and depending on the size. I like the Whimsies veggie ones because the potato-based ones just aren't great for him. Um, hmm. What? But the uh, the Whimsies are great. The Himalayan cheeses, once their teeth are a little stronger, those are wonderful. And then for teething puppers, choose like, this is a freezable one. Uh, it's just got like a gel like a liquid on the inside you can get ones that you can just fill with water and freeze it's literally a baby toy um this was wonderful for remus when he was teething again not a super strong chewer so i don't know how these go with like something if you've got one of the tougher breeds but this was wonderful for him you get that i got this at PetSmart, and then these are fail safes this is the larger one these are the puppy the puppy kongs this is the te like teething stick 
And then of course there's the puppy, like the blue and the pink um, Kongs. I get the blue and the pink. I don't understand why we have to gender puppies. They're puppies. Like, oh, that's a whole nother issue though. Oh, you're going to need multiple crates. So that's, there's a crate folded up. I prefer the wire crates for once they're a little bigger. Um, we used the plastic crate for the first like two months just because that was nice and small. Um, I am a fan of doing multiple crates rather than any kind of divider. Dividers, they can actually come loose and you can get injuries that way and that makes me, eh, that makes me nervous. Um, Remus went through three crates. But yeah, so Remus had a bunch of crates. I think that was the way to go. You can buy them off Craigslist or Kijiji used or in the used, like the Facebook Marketplace is a thing now, which is I, I think is awesome. What are you doing? But yeah. Uh, buy them used. That's the best. That's the cheapest way to do it. Um, you want to have some kind of. You want a bunch of towels, like old towels, because especially for things like puppy training, that's something else that I didn't appreciate enough. Uh, definitely have those on hand. And then these, I think, these are the dirty paws mats. Now I thought these were gimmicky. Gimmicky is all heck. But then we used one after me having growing up with growing up with a Sheltie who was also hairy and loved wet things. Um, and I found out how quickly these dried Remus in comparison to like standing there with a regular towel and I was sold. If you're in Ontario, Wren's pet, uh, pet, oh gosh, can't talk. Wren's does a sale of them a couple of times a year. And, uh, that's when I recommend buying them. Always buy them on sale, never pay full price. They are so expensive. Sometimes they also show up at winners, so that way you're not paying full price. I like how you just have Remus's chest as your view right now. With the idea of towels, you also want stain removers and odor removers. Um, Remus only had a few accidents in the house. We were very, very lucky, but still you want to get rid of the smell because you don't want to give them like the idea that it's a good spot to go. Um, we used Nature's Miracle and it was fine. I mean, I'm not, I don't have like a go-to brand because we didn't have, we only used the one bottle. It worked, it was fine. Um, with that, something for a chew guard, we use what's called McNasty. You can get it at an equestrian, uh, equestrian stores. It's, they put it on horses to keep horses from licking their wounds. So it's, a lot of people are like, oh, that green apple stuff doesn't work worth crap. I, I agree, it didn't do anything for us. Our breeder was like, use McNasty. And I was like, that sounds disgusting. It is, it's so gross. Um, I got it in my mouth once by accident. I wanted to die. Um, not actually, it's not bad for them in any way. It just, it's gross. And it kept him, the one thing he ever tried to chew was one of our kitchen chairs. I sprayed it on it. He never touched it. So that really, really works. Highly, highly recommend that. It's a little more expensive. However, it's so good. Like, so good. The other things you want to make sure that you grab that for your puppy. What are you doing? You weirdo. Um... Travel dishes that doesn't like I don't, if you don't ever go anywhere then whatever you don't need them but for us we go to like the um, the cottage a lot and uh, Remus is a well traveled dog so we grab travel dishes we get ours from Winners they're just collapsible little bowls that I can flatten and throw in a bag um, for water or for food just so I'm not lugging around like f five quart and fifteen quart bowls that he has because his are so big. In the car as well, you want to make sure that you have a seat cover. Uh, the style is your choice. The brand is your choice. Um, just one protects the car. Because <laughs> if, if you have a monster like this, then your car seats can pay the price. And also with that, a seat belt system of some kind. We use Remus's harness hooked up to a seat belt by... Uh, oh my gosh, is it the Kurgo brand? But I really like it because it, it gives a lot of mobility, but still won't let him go super far because having a big dog, some of the rigid ones, I'm like, he can't even sit up with them. So find a car seat or a, a seat belt situation that works for you based on the size of your dog. You want shampoo and brushes, of course, for grooming. And the level of needs for that are going to depend on the breed of dog. 
If you want to just take your dog to a gr groomer whenever it needs it, that's cool. That's not an option for us because Remus hates getting brushed, so that's like a whole three ring circus when we do that. But we do it ourselves. You, when you find the type of breed you're getting, research the best type of brushes that you need because they're not. it's not all the same and you need different things for different dogs. You need beds. We, Remus has five beds. Do you have five beds? <laughs> this is what I'm looking at right now. Do you have five beds all to yourself? Um, Remus has five, however, you don't need that many. Make sure that you get one that's big enough for when it's an adult, if possible. Um, you can get them from, I know Costco makes really nice big ones. Um, Winners carries a really nice variety of beds for good prices, but it all depends on what size of dog and all that. Every, all, your own personal needs, it's all personal with that kind of stuff. And toys. Um, honestly, that's, I think that's, oh, no, not just toys, but we'll talk about toys first. So I mentioned the Kong stuff for chews. However, soft toys like Mr. Rabbit right there are really important. For puppies, you'll find out how quickly they demolish them. Um, but usually there's one that they really latch onto if you bring, give it to them as soon as they come home. Remus has Mr. Koala, who is still, he's disgusting. But that's like his, his baby. Um, so you want to make sure that you give them that kind of option as well. To figure out what they like, because every dog is different. Not some dogs don't like ropes. Some dogs don't like. Some dogs don't like stuffies. It all depends. I'm not paying him right now. That's why he's getting fussy. Yeah. The drama. And then the last thing that I want to mention, you want X pens. So like, right here. I just brought this room is a disaster because I brought things in for the video. But that's an X pen. Uh, you can get them taller. You can get them. Hu you can get huge ones. They're just. Um, Midwest exercise pens. Yes, you want those for gating off areas or, you know, it's a good, it's a great way when they're little to kind of keep them in your, in your sight at all times. And I find when you've got them in your sight, if you can see them, you can do the, like, potty training is so much easier. And then last, you're almost done. Last are puppy gates. We use baby gates everywhere when we got Remus. Um, again, we, because of his size and the fact that it was our first ever puppy, we kept him with us everywhere and it really made training so much easier. So that's how I would do it. So baby gates, crates, X pens, keep your puppy with you. <laughs> but beyond that, those are the essentials. I know that seems like a large list. I hope it was helpful. I'm sorry that my model was a little less than cooperative. But if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. We're putting out videos every week. Thank you so much for watching. Remus, you're not even going to say bye? <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.